Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to some more Xenonauts 1. Now, I'll just say at the top, this might be the last episode, at least in this quickfire uh, format. This was only supposed to be a bit of a gap fill experiment. Um, uh, we, we, we'll be probably, if I've looked at my schedule properly, we're probably doing Dave the Diver tomorrow. But this may continue in a sort of once a day capacity, something like that in the background. Feedback would be welcome. I will honest, uh, be honest, I'm a little miffed. I didn't realize that Xenonauts 2 is going into early access. I thought it was going into full release. Um, and given the development history with this and all the bugs that never got fixed or all that, it worries me. I'm already a bit funny about early access anyway. Um, I don't like the idea of committing to a full playthrough of a game when maybe it's only got a few hours of content and it's thin, in, you know, and it's not really the full product. Why don't we just cover it at full release and cover something else at 1.0? So I have a lot of conflicting feelings at the moment and I've only just realized that, uh, that Xenonauts is going into early access, which I'm steering away from. An example, like Jagged Alliance, um, what's it called? Heroes of Avium, Punch Club. There's so many different games. Homeseek, all these other games coming out pretty much the same day. And they're all full release. So I'd be curious what people have to say about that. And then that, that puts this playthrough in a bit of a tricky situation. Do we continue with this one? I don't know. I really don't know. But anyway, I just thought I'd front load that anyway, in case you're wondering where'd my episodes go. That's probably where the, what's going to happen. So we're going to return home. Heavy losses, right? Took some pretty big bloody hits. Might be worth putting more meat in the tube, actually. Uh, let's see. Personnel capacity use. 42 out of 70. Even this bugging out, like what? 42 out of 70, so we should probably hire three more Marines, right? Well, they're not, uh, they're sort of Marines. I guess they're, they're, they're purely air insert, you know, air Marines, <laughs> in a way. Like their entire, their entire combat outlay and purview is aerial assault from a helicopter. Okay, so they're back. Uh, we were talking about shoring up our lab, potentially. Now, our lab I, research capacity use. Oh. Maybe we can uh, hire some scientists. Give me 10 more. Yeah, let's go. Jeez, my funds have come right down, haven't they? Okay. Oh, well, that's good timing, isn't it? Situation stable. We haven't lost any continents. Okay. Uh, Central America's giving me bugger all. North America. Yep, yep. Australasia increased. Now, where were we present? In Africa, but we're not really, we're not really up and running just yet, are we? Total funding, accept. Maybe we should get a bit of a look of the regions. So everything's good there. Average in Indochina. Poor in the Soviet Union. Middle East has gone poor because some people have started dying. Southern Africa is bad. We're working towards that. Probably a good thing that that's where I shored up my, my bases first. Forecast change. Ah, uh, there you go. Key information. If you don't mouse over anywhere in particular, you can see up here. Hmm. Okay. Well, how is our coverage down here looking? Oh, <gasps> I don't actually... I kind of assumed that there'd be a radar room included, but there isn't. Oh, no wonder. Oh my god. Wow, and that's 250,000. That's, that's pretty much all my funding straight away. I was going to say, why isn't there a circle? <laughs> so that's the most expensive thing is radar coverage. Oh my goodness. 
I am really enjoying this, just by the way. Even though it's an ancient game, it, I don't know at this point of recording how the views are gonna go for something like this. My hope is people enjoy it after Aliens. And again, my I'm worried about the Xenonauts 2 thing. So yeah, I look forward to seeing what people have to say. But all of that aside, I'm actually having a really good time. This, this science narrative, walls of interesting texts that are hard science based, I find to be so cool. But I could see that some people, you know, they just want action run and gun stuff. Everyone's different. Now, light drone wreckage. Yeah, this Roomba that had a machine gun. Light drone is a small saucer shaped drone, approximately 140 centimeters wide, with a thruster array mounted at the rear of the saucers and the sensors and weaponry on the front. It is capable of hovering, but is usually sighted skimming the battlefield roughly a meter above the ground. This allows it to move freely over small obstacles or otherwise impassable terrain, such as water. Disassembly of recovered wreckage suggests that the heart of the drone is an alenium reactor no larger than a man's fist. We assume the mass of the alien circuitry that surrounds it is, in fact, the drone's electronic brain. The lack of any visible receiver antenna suggests that these units are fully autonomous when operational. An engine array of on the rear of the drone provides forward motion, while the hover effect, and probably pitch and roll, is generated by the dozen smaller thrusters that dot the underside of the drone. Sure, the frontal part of the saucer is filled with a powerful scanner that can monitor m almost the entire electromagnetic spectrum giving these drones excellent sight ranges. The drone is armed with an unusual integrated weapon we have dubbed the Burst Cannon. The Plasma Generation Array has been designed to emphasize rate of fire above all else, allowing it to fire extremely quickly, but leaving it underpowered even compared to the Plasma Pistol. Oh, okay, it's more bark than bite. A single shot will probably not even kill an unarmored civilian, as the shell of the drone itself is not uh, even thick enough to resist sustained small arms fire, I suspect these units are disposable scout units primarily designed to locate and suppress enemies so that accompanying aliens can deal with them more easily. A support role rather than a hunter-killer role, it seems. It's cool though, but it gives me ideas how the game thinks in terms of suppressive units, so maybe I try and have dedicated suppressors. Corvette UFO. Oh wow, look at it. The cor well, I mean, we saw it before when we assaulted it. The Corvette is a medium-sized UFO. It is the first genuine alien warship that we have encountered, exchanging the delicate wing surfaces used by smaller UFOs as sensor amplifiers for a sturdier hull construction and more powerful weapons. The armor plating on this craft is the same stuff as the lighter UFOs, but applied in greater quantities, adding enormous survivability at the cost of greatly increased weight. What do we bring it down with? A big and a small fighter, right? The large engines mounted on the rear of the vessel are enough to keep it airborne, but it's sl it is slow and ponderous compared to the lighter craft that preceded it and therefore vulnerable to heavy torpedoes. Yeah, okay. The power requirements of these engines necessitate both a second power core and an improved method of power transmission. The hull electronics are much more advanced than previously, so we have extracted them for further study. The primary armament of the Corvette is a forward-firing heavy plasma cannon. This is a slow rate of fire, but generates a powerful explosive projectile that is just as deadly when used to bomb ground targets as it is when it's used against aerial opponents. These projectiles uh, travel relatively slow. You may find that our more agile interceptors are able to avoid them with an evasive roll maneuver, but they will inflict heavy damage on anything that they hit. Be very careful about flying your interceptors into its firing arc. Yeah, 1400. Maybe we can handle it with the smaller ones, generally speaking. You know, because they're dodgier. I'm enjoying kind of just triaging the auto-resolve. Um, so we've got our current research projects in. Got new scientists coming. Okay. 
Yeah, all right. So we've got to get that up and running. Following items have been uh, arrived. Three soldiers. Very good. Okay. I was thinking about the scout class, how it's light and it's got C4. And we should probably use that as a bit of a... Makes me think of the berserker dudes from Lord of the Rings running up to blow up the wall. Maybe just send the dude up the guts with the C4 to stick it to the side of a ship. I'm... I haven't thought too much about it, but presumably our rocket launcher did break. Presumably we can poke holes through the sides of the ship and breach that way. I mean, you can do it to buildings. Why can't you blow half the ship up and breach through the side? That seems like a maybe a better way of ingress, if possible. Ten scientists. Okay. Well, yep, okay. We could probably use some more, but our funding is through the floor. What the priority is getting this radar up, because I'm an idiot. Workshops completed. Yeah. Production of Jackal armor is finished. Okay, okay. So... Precision laser. Laser pistol. Precision laser, right? And armor. So this can... Yeah, I feel like this might be the way. hundred days, eh? But that's more like 20, right? One per 20 days, which isn't perfect. Sort of got to balance these numbers a bit. Hmm. Six, seven, forty. That's more like four days, isn't it? hundred days. Hmm. Hmm. Probably need more staff then, I guess. And we've got an empty workshop in South Africa. Center on UFO. So which one's this? Small 2000. So this is what we intercept with a Foxtrot. Oh. That's the uh, medium. Now, interesting. It seems to be out of the range of the... Condors. Tail until over land. Auto resolve ninety six. Let's go. So 
Select new target. Might as well since we're next to it. Okay, let's um... I wonder if it's worth gunning up the new base for this. Got a whole bunch of privates. Got no jackal armor though. Hmm. We've only got three there. What do we think? Do we send in the recruits? Send in the newbies? Because it'd be good to have the other ship on reserve over the Australia coverage. It's this is a sensible the sensible position is sending this one. Charlie 2. They're all privates. So is that what the rifleman comes with? No 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 bloody uh medi pack or anything, the default. Okay. Honestly, stuff it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. Cause then I'll figure out what archetypes I do and don't like. Crash site by intercept. How come Charlie 2 can't make it? a bit weird, isn't it? What am I looking at there? ETA is shorter. Huh. I wonder why. Why be difficult game? Oh, have I just not allocated any of these guys to it? Aha, uh -huh, that'd be it. That's much better. Okay, silly sausage. That was on me. Crash site, intercept, Charlie 2. There we go, let's go. Give him a bit of a go. Now, yeah, that's not gonna work. So disengage. He's got no ammo left. Foxtrot 2 is currently on an intercept course. Go to last known location. Oi. Select new target. I mean auto resolve zero. Oh, this is a bigger one. Disengage. Um Intercept. Oh just in the range of the condor. I wonder if a single condor can put it down. God, I hope they don't attack my thing. So what is this? Small, 16, no, 2000. We intercept that with a foxtrot. Tail until overland. Reach crash site. Engage, engage. Let's go. Jesus, getting busy now. It's a lot of stuff for me to handle. I might have to just shoot down that uh that one because it was hanging out over the ocean. Carol Barnes. Barnesy. Oh, we're up or oh, edge of the map there, okay. Uh -huh. 
Someone pointed out I should probably stay a bit more grouped up. Which, yes, I agree. True. But I also want to engage perimeter because I don't know how aggressively their aliens move around the map. That's not something super clear to me. I wonder if it's worth just holding a corner like that. I know he's exposed, but at least he has vision. Chub security. Can you just go through the fence? Oh, is there a hole in the fence? It's very hard to see. It's easy to see now with the fog of war. Okay. Oh! Oh, mate's taking shots. Let him have it! Oh, he's getting rounds on target. Good for him. Hear the cogs turning in my head. Bit of an aggressive sweep, but hey, they're rookies. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Bad day to be him. sighted apparently where when I click on the I was gonna say why is he red shots on Oi! but he earned those sim dollars Block 10%. Block 100%. Mm. So 
all right and take it aha oh, I suppress him Oh shoot it. Oh wow, he got softened up by old mate. So Jeez, how fat and slow is this bloke? Mate, take it take it on the outside. That's better. Bit of pace. Who's this? It's kind of cool just having a bunch of generic rookies in matching outfits. Nah, no good. Old mate's brave as anything. Him a bit more of a tickle, eh? Is it worth suppressing him? Wait, well. Yeah. <laughs> Sucked in. I guess if they're already suppressed, you probably don't want to burst them again, maybe? Don't know. Wow. Vilma Nagy. Wow, she's got some pace. Big Vilma. The South African crew. Getting it done. Who's this? Alma Clausen. She needs to spend more time in the gym, I think. Puff, puff, and puff. Oh no! He's my best shooter. Yeah, okay, so the wall's going to block that. So how are you going to engage him safely? Not really. Just close the gap. Fingers crossed, right? Nice. Put him in the bin. Artem Zatsoyev. Well, at least he's not bleeding. Good work, Artem. Artyom. Ah, oh, she's got pace, man. She's got legs, knows how to use them. Getting cover. It's just a disc. I'm 
Is that everyone? Okay. Oh no. Oh no. None of that. Elmer's having some stress issues. Can't blame her. Put her in cover. Oh, Elmer's blocked the bloody doorway. Ah, uh, okay. Elmer Fudd. Let's just sweep here quick. Yeah, cool. Probably should have crouched first. Uh, or Artem, going for it. Mate, commitment. Crouch first. Oh, quick sneeze, you know, just for good measure. <laughs> oh, delicious Carol. Good work, love. The old bat. She looks like a Carol too. the ship. Very good. Oh no boys! Oh! It's alright. Couldn't hit anything. Couldn't hit the side of a barn. Alright, cool. Well, we're going to wrap it there for the moment. Again, uh, drop a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you want to see more of this? But, you know, perhaps you're sympathetic to the predicament that I'm in. I, I don't actually know if or how we will cover Xenonauts 2 because, again, when you put it when you put it on the table and say, one day, hopefully, it'll go 1.0. And then that day, it probably deserves a full playthrough. But until then, surely shouldn't I give the limelight to something else that's managed to... I don't want to say make the effort, but overcome it all and go full full release. So I kind of put a heavier weight on the 1.0 releases because they made it through the the turmoil that was early access and came out the other end not as a scam. Not that Xeno Noughts is a scam, but I think you understand my, my sort of conundrum. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, team, thanks again for joining me. Might just leave it there for the time being and I'll catch you guys on the next one.